darkness you shine Out of the darkness we rise There's no one like you Words can lift you up, words can 
sorrow comes to steal the joy I own. Brokenness and pain is all I know. Oh, I won't be shaken. No, I won't be shaken. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I Timothy 1 7 we have not been given a spirit of fear but a spirit of love power and a sound mind right hey man I'm having one of those OCD moments when I suddenly realize the pulpit isn't lined up with the aisle and so all of a sudden I'm trying to talk and I'm trying to line up the pulpit at the same time so my OCD is cured just like that. you really don't have OCD I just, I just have a, a, li, a, li, a, 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 a little touch. If you, know, you did, I mean, you'd call it CDO. Uh, C, uh, yeah, uh-huh. uh-huh. They're in alphabetical uh-huh. order. <laughs> all the, all, such is that. Such is that. <laughs> we welcome you to the house. And it is our prayer that when you came here today, you came believing and you came with a mindset to receive what God has for you. Because he adores you. He loves you. I'm amazed at what extreme lengths God will do to get his kids where he needs them to be. I did a funeral for a woman on Saturday morning, relative of Durwa Domini. She lived alone in Florida for many years. 
and the family wasn't sure, she wasn't sure about her salvation. And so God brings her up here, and the family, Derwood's family, loves on her, pours into her, and they're constantly talking to her about her relationship with God, want to make sure that she's saved. As hospice chaplain, I got to minister to her, and we talked together, and I'd asked her, are you where you need to be with Jesus? Are you saved? Well, I hope so. Well, that's not the word we want to hear. If I were to ask you today, do you know that you know that you know that when you die, you're going to heaven to be with the Lord? And you were to say, well, I hope so. That's not the answer. The answer we want to hear from you, yes, I believe in Jesus. Jesus is my Savior. I know I'm going to heaven when I die. That's where we want you to be. We want you to have that peace. And I thought about it. Here's a woman who lived alone, and God went to amazing uh, effort to get her moved up here just to make sure that one of his sheep that wasn't sure she was part of the 100 got the 99 over here and that God brings her up here and makes sure that she's saved at, at the end of her life the last days of her life she said I've been hearing Jesus talk to me and well what has he been saying he said, come on home Jimmy her name is, her name is Jimmy J-I-M-M-I-E come on home and so I said, well, that's pretty good proof right there. If Jesus is calling to you, you can know now that you are saved. And so we're celebrating that. So God goes to extraordinary lengths to get the attention of his kids to make sure they're ready. So be ready to receive today whatever God has for you. And just be listening to whatever he deposits in your heart. Bible study today at 5 o'clock p.m. It's going to be a full month. I want to tell you, a lot is going on this month. We're going to have a fall festival on Wednesday evening, October 18th. And we're going to have, you know, the dry slide and the obstacle course and the bouncy house and the axe throw. This is not real axes, by the way. And we're, and we're going to have a hayride. All this stuff on that Wednesday night. We'll probably have an outdoor service that evening. Just a brief time where we gather together. And get, get, get her, get her. We're going to get her together. Get her. And get her together and sing some songs. <laughs> and have a word, and we'll eat, of course. When we gather, we eat. We're going we're gonna to find something. Do you have to go over there and buy out the family dollar, general dollar, general dollar family, whatever. Whatever dollar it is, we'll get the dollar, and we'll get all their honey buns, and it'll be okay. You know. <laughs> One day, we're going to serve RC Cola and Moon Pie, so just be waiting for that. That's coming. One day. One day we're going to serve RC Cola and Moon Pies, and it's going to be fun. We'll do that one day just, just for fun. On October 21st, that morning here, we're having a men's ministry breakfast at 8 o'clock. Michael Morton's going to be speaking. We're going to serve the guys breakfast. And then the women are going to have an event at noon that day. So as soon as we get out, and we will get out, Pat, so you can decorate, uh, the women were going to come in here, and they're going to have uh, Julie Seals is coming in to minister. Watch for the, her picture and bio. We're going to be posting that soon. Uh, this is an incredible story of God's uh, restoration and transformation. This woman has been through it, uh, but she's on fire for the Lord, and she's going to be ministering on that Saturday. And then on Sunday morning, she's going to be ministering here in the worship service on October 22nd. Believe me, you're going to want to hear what she's got to say. God has done an extreme work in her. She's one of us. I mean, she had a life sentence in prison. God set her free, delivered her from that. Uh, she overcame spina bifida when she was a kid. She's lost a leg that was amputated. Um, she's been a drug user, a drug dealer, and God has set her on fire, and she's living for the Lord today in a mighty way. And so... <laughs> You, you just got everybody, you're just going to want to be here to enjoy that. That's going to happen on Saturday for the women around noon on the 21st and then Sunday for all of us on the 22nd. So good things are going to be happening this month. It's going to be great. So I want to share that with you. You see those water bottles, those empty water bottles over there? We're gathering up resources for Samaritan's Purse, the shoe boxes that we'll be sending out again. If you want to sow some seed, that white box is to drop cash in there or check. If you want to, make it out to the church. All those funds will go to you know, the boxes and the shipping and all that. And so that's just, I mean, the church could do it without any additional funding, but we give you the chance just because some people like to sow into that specifically. We're asking right now for soap, bars of soap that we'll be putting in the boxes. You know, bars, a normal standard size bar of soap. 
so we can send that off too as part of what we're doing there. So we wanted you to know about that so you can get in on that and be a part of that if you wanted to. I'm checking my bulletin to make sure I ain't forgot nothing. Ah, ah, Mm. every Wednesday night we do have church here, right? And we feed everybody for free. The Thursday night ministry is off the chain. It is amazing what's happening in the social hall with the prophetic event every Thursday. People are coming, new people every. People want to get a word from the Lord. They want to learn how to get a word from the Lord. So if you've never experienced that, Wednesday night, I mean, thir- excuse me, Thursday night at 6 o'clock p.m., come and participate in the prophetic event and just see what happens. It is truly amazing. All right. We want to pray and ask the Lord's blessing on the giving of our gifts to Him. And I also want to tell you, in that prophetic event, they don't just do prophecy. They do healing, too. They pray for healing. And so if you need a healing touch, come on a Thursday night and let them pray over you for healing. God's doing great stuff there. It's amazing. All right. I want to pray over the offering. And there's three offerings in this envelope that I need to present. And I tell you that because it's important that I be accountable and be faithful. That when people send me their offering, that it's included, it's here, and I get to submit it on their behalf. And so I want to pray over this one and all of them. Heavenly Father. We are mindful of the fact that we couldn't do anything without you. Jesus said it in John 15, 5 when he said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. That's truth. That's a fact. We can't do anything without you. So as we give today, we're giving out of gratitude and thanksgiving and love and commitment and covenant. All of it. All of it. So God bless these offerings today. And Father... I don't know what people are carrying in their hearts today. But I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, just to move over the room, just to work the room today. Knowing what you know about all.
where the praise comes from, where the worship comes from. Lord, I worship you because of who you are, not because of who I am, not because of this stage. I worship because of who you are because you are great and you are mighty and you are sovereign and you are the lover of my soul and you gave your son's life so that I could have eternal life. I could name all the reasons, God. Lord, keep my heart bowed down to you. I can't believe how good the Lord is. Have you ever heard that? good the Lord is. Has he been good to you? Oh, he's been so good to me. Lord, we want to stay here with you. On Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, every minute of every day, we want to stay here with you. I hear you, Lord. I'm listening. I'm listening. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood my heart. Come fill the atmosphere. Whatever you 
be on my face before you go I give you my children You already have my children Lord, I give you everything I worry about And I give you my life I don't want to just give you my worries I give you my life your way, Lord, to do the things that you want to do through me. Lord God, work through me. I say yes, Lord. My response to you is yes, no matter what it looks like. I trust you. I am your servant. Shake up the ground of all of my traditions. of all of my religion because your way is better his way is better shake up the ground all my tradition break down the walls of all my religion your way is better your way is better shake up the ground Tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground. Tradition, break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Never make room for you.
and serve you and feel you and know you.
true and and for us that are having a hard time believing that Lord that that believing that the surrender is how we win that surrender is the path to victory that surrendering to you is how we overcome Lord help us to we we, we declare this Lord that I do believe help my unbelief Lord that we can surrender to you Lord and you have good things in store for us Lord that we can surrender to you and you have a path out of our misery and you have a path out of emptiness and a path out of fear and doubt and dismay and depression and anxiety and addiction you've got a path out of that and then surrendering to you you have everything that we need and we thank you for that God we thank you that you're a a generous God and a loving God and a kind God your word Lord it tells us that you long to be gracious to us Lord Help us to believe that, Lord, and to with that to surrender to you, Lord. And we, we give you this time here now as we read your word and talk about you. I just ask that you speak to every heart and every mind here, every soul here, Lord, and you have your way, Lord. Speak what, if it's something different, that you, if you got a different message for every person in the room, Lord, speak to every heart and mind the message that we need to hear. We love you and we praise you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, we're going to look at at Matthew chapter 7 today. I just got to say this, before we get into that, that I I was reading Isaiah 30 this morning. It's talking about how the the Israelites were going through a stretch of being hard-headed. The the word it says is obstinate. Obstinate is like, I'm just going to refuse to get on board with you, God. I ain't going to do what you tell me to do. And it just proceeds to list all the ways that they were disobedient. And then at the end of there, or really in the middle section down, it says, in spite of our, ourselves being stubborn, hard-headed, obstinate, the Lord uh, longs to be gracious to us. He longs to be gracious to us. He wants to pour out his grace and his mercy on us. He wants to walk with us through whatever trials we're going through. He wants to help us wherever we have need at. He wants us to experience life and life abundant inside of him. He longs to do that for you and for me in spite of us and our hard-headedness. What, what a mighty God. I'm, I'm glad God's not like me. If, if uh, I mean, my, my kids were being hard-headed this morning, and, and I did not long to be gracious to them this morning. It, it wasn't in me. And they didn't long to be gracious to me. My three-year-old told me she had a little baby stroller she was pushing around. She was going to hit me with her stroller tomorrow. And I, at least I thanked her for giving me a heads up so I can be ready tomorrow. I can make arrangements to get struck with that stroller. But, but I, thank, I thank God that he's not like us. He's so much better than us. He's so much higher than us in ways that we can't comprehend. No matter what we've done, how far we've gone away, we can't outrun his graciousness because he longs to give it to us. He longs. He, he's walked with you and he's walked with me through all of our disobedience and any, anything that we've done against him, he's just been there waiting for us. And i got to thank him for that. I'm thankful for him. I'm thankful for the way he treats us. Uh, in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1, this is the kind of the conclusion of, of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which is a beautiful sermon, the most beautiful sermon, uh, and probably the most challenging sermon. If you remember, if you... If, some of the things that he, he tells us in, in Matthew chapter 5 verse se- through 7, uh, he says, if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn the other cheek to him too. Let him, let him get you one more time there. He tells us to love our enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Just wild stuff, wild stuff. We don't, we don't hear this stuff in school or growing up. Probably didn't hear it in our household. Somebody, household, somebody hits you, you hit them back. You know, there's, there's all this 
And, but he, he tells us something different. He tells us to love our enemies and pray for them. He tells this, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. All, all this is pointing us to him because we can't do it on our own. We don't have the ability. Let me speak for me. I don't have the ability to love my enemies. i got to love him, and he's got to do a heart transplant in me. He's got to do surgery on me and put his heart into me so that I can love my enemies. I can't be perfect. I can't. I've, I've tried. I can't make it a minute with, to be perfect. But he can do a heart transplant, a mind transplant in me to help me strive for perfection. He tells us to forgive other people when they sin against you. And your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. I better be forgiven. I better get started forgiving. And pastor has told us several times, even if you don't mean it, go ahead and say it. Say it out loud. and Let your, let your heart and your mind catch up to your faith. He tells us not to worry about life, about what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear. He's going to take care of all that. He tells us to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Everything you need will be added to you. And then he comes to the, this conclusive chapter in chapter 7. And so Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 it says this. Do not judge or you too will be judged. Anybody here consider themselves judgmental? Very few of us ever want to agree to that. Listen, I do. I'm judgmental. I'll be, I, I'm going to get back to that. It's not something I'm proud of or want to admit to. I would imagine we would all say, if we had to add, did a questionnaire, how many of you like being judged? Nobody would raise their hand to like and being judged. And it's something we don't consider an attractive quality in a person, but I think we all do it. I know I do, and I'm going to tell you how. Uh, but this is what, what Jesus says, for in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. So listen, so any judgment I want to pronounce on anybody going forward is mercy and grace. Because the measure used that I use on you is what the Lord is going to use on me. Right? And I want mercy, and I need mercy, and I want grace, and I need grace. And I was thinking about the ways I judge people. I'm going to confess some of my misdemeanors to y'all. I'm not going to get into the felonies or anything like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it low level in here. But it's just weird the way my mind works, the way my heart works. But we live close to the, to the bike trail. And, on my way, and pretty much I do this without fail on Sunday mornings. I see somebody running on the bike trail on my way to church. And here's what I think. That joker ain't going to church. They out here on the bike trail, and I'm judging them all. I don't know who they are. They might have already been to church. They might have gone to early church. They might have been to church yesterday. They might be going later on this afternoon. But for whatever reason, I just do that, and I don't, I don't know what that's about. It's my stuff. It's something i got to work on, but I'm just going to tell you some of these things and see if you see yourself in any of these things too. Here's another way I judge people. When people call me to call out sick for work, faking every time. <laughs> This dude ain't sick. I saw him yesterday. He didn't cough. He didn't sneeze. He was happy bouncing around. I know he's faking. He ain't sick. I don't know, but that's just where I go in my mind and my heart. That's where I go. I don't know what's going on with that person. You can get sick pretty quick. <laughs> Here's another one. You might can relate to this too, but maybe on the interstate and you're driving along, got a good speed, and, and here comes some joker coming up behind you fast, bearing down on you. And I, who, is, who is this joker right here coming up on me like this? I'm going a good speed. I don't know. I'm, he must think he's mighty important trying to get wherever he's going. I have no idea. He might be important, and he might be trying to get somewhere important. I don't know, but I automatically cast judgment as if I'm the only one who knows the correct speed and we have to drive on the road, the correct lane to be in when you're driving said speed, and how much distance should between me and the, and the car in front of me and behind me. And I do all these things without even really thinking about it, and the Lord's convicted me of stuff on these low-level things, and I got higher-level things, too. I'm not going to get into that, but, but you know we all got to, when, when you got the, you hear about murders, you hear about the, the felony stuff, the thieving and stealing, all that kind of stuff, and and, and you think, or I think stuff, well, I always knew so-and-so was like this. I've been thinking all along, I knew something was wrong with him, or something is wrong with him because he did this and did that. Well, look, I'm pronouncing a sentence on this person. That's what I do when I'm a judging somebody, is I'm pronouncing a sentence on him. And the Lord has told me that the measure I use will be measured back to me. 
And so that's not the measure I want to receive back is so-and-so. I knew he was going to get like that. I knew he deserved that because he did this and did that. There's this guy named Brian Stevenson who wrote a book called Just Mercy. Brian, he's a, I think he made a movie out of it too. But uh, in the book, he tells many stories about people's lives and people that were wrongly convicted for crimes and got sentenced to jail falsely, people that did crimes and, and got sentenced to jail appropriately. But he also tells in the book, everybody's got a story. And, I, and almost every time, every one of these stories he went through about people that were in jail for doing these heinous crimes had heinous lives coming up, had terrible things done to them, terrible abuse, terrible atrocities. And, and it, it puts it back in our perspective as if that happened to me, I'd probably be in the same, same boat. And I think what the Lord is trying to tell us here in, I don't, in Matthew 7, I don't usually do good with do nots. I don't think we do as humans. You know, when Adam and Eve were first in the garden, the Lord told them they can have whatever they wanted to, just don't touch this one tree. What did they do? Listen, I got to go get this one piece of fruit off of this tree. And I think we've been the same way ever since. We got to, if we tell us not to do something, we got to do it. Let me tell you something else about how I do things, too. About how I, I'm going to tell you how I break the law every day. I speed every day. If you look out there on the signs, everywhere you go in town, they got signs posted, and it says speed limit on there. And the limit, as I understand limit, is this is the max. You can go this high and no more. So whether you're in Main Street and it's 35 or 45, look, I got to go 42, I got to go 52, I can't go the limit. I just, my foot won't work like that. It's got to go more than what the speed says. And that's breaking the law, and I'm doing it every day. If I would have, I didn't drive to church this morning, but if I would have drove to church this morning, I would have done it then on the way out here. And not to call my wife out, but I creeped over when she was driving. She was driving over that limit too. <laughs> and there's this unwritten rule, you know, in, in America at least, you know, you can probably drive about, what, nine miles over without getting a ticket? And probably most of us do that. We probably, if it's 55, we're going to go 62, 63, 64. Some of y'all live a little bit more dangerously. Y'all going to creep on up. Y'all going to give it 14 miles or 15 miles. Y'all going to go 70 miles. And for the most part, law enforcement is okay with it. I've rode by them several times going seven, eight, nine miles over an hour. They just look, keep on going. I'm going. They're, everybody's fine. Everybody's cool with it. And I wonder, is being judgmental of others like speeding for us? Is there some sort of unwritten rule for me or for you that it's okay for us to judge other people? And when I do, is God okay with it like the law enforcement is when I'm speeding? Well, God, listen, I'm just thinking these judgments. When I think about the people on the bike trail, I don't say it out loud. I don't think, I just think to myself, well, who, who knows if I'm judging? The Lord knows. The Lord knows our hearts and our minds, and he tells us not to judge. But I want to, do you think he looks the other way? Maybe I walk by God, or maybe I'm walking by God's people and judging them and thinking God ain't going to pull me over for this. And he may not pull me over this time. He may get me the next time. But it's what it said. What it, what it, he said, the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And so I told you, I don't really do good, and I don't think we do good on the whole as with the do-nots if I don't. But he doesn't leave it there. Like most everything in Matthew 5 through 7, Jesus takes it a step further. You know, I never murdered anybody, but he told us to, if you're angry with your brother, it's the same thing as murder. Right. You ever, anybody been angry at your brother before, your sister? Listen, I'm a serial killer. <laughs> I'm a mass terrorist. I've taken out more than whatever the worst terrorist. I'm the ace of spades on the terrorist wanted list right there. So Jesus takes things to another level. And this is what he does in this, in this verse. That was Matthew 5 or 6. This is Matthew chapter 7. He says, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? The plank. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. That's a hard word. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. I brought a plank. Oh, Casey, help me out. Appreciate it. I don't know if this qualifies out of plank, but it's a board. And I know it's, I just, it helps me to visualize things sometimes. So if I got a plank in my eye, 
and I'm going to try to help Brother Robert get this speck of sawdust out of his eye. What's likely going to happen? I'm probably going to, I think I about got a piece of dust in my eye just from doing that. The Lord humbling me up here. I'm probably going to knock Robert out with my plank. I think I'm going to help him. Or I'm going to help pass. I'm going to help him, help Caleb. I'm going to help Robert. But I got this big old plank. I can't see to help you. More than likely, I'm going to cause more pain to you because I can't see what I'm doing. And the Lord's telling me, he's telling you in here to get this plank out of our own eye. Get this plank. And I don't, I don't want to look at myself. It's hard work to look at yourself and to ask God, God, show me. When, we, when we're singing to him and we're telling him that I, I surrender and it is well with my soul, you can have, make, I'll make room for you to do whatever you want to. Let's make room for him to do some plank removal work on us to take this out of here. And it's, it's really a, a gift when we allow him to do that. The Lord ain't going to set us up to beat us down, is he? He longs to be gracious to us. I've come to him, and I pray like David prayed in Psalm 139. He said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Look at my planks. Right? Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is how we get rid of the planks in our life as we partner with the Holy Spirit and we ask him to do this. Search me. My prayer shouldn't be to search you. right? It ain't search, search this person I don't like that's getting on my nerves and know his heart. Test him, know his anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in him. Help him to the way everlasting. The, the psalmist says here to, in this prayer to search me. Search me, God. Search me. This the way he does stuff. It's it's so kind and so gracious that when he reveals this stuff to you, the, he describes himself as gentle and humble in heart. There's a, a verse in, in Matthew eleven that comes to mind. I think it's Matthew eleven, twenty eight. Make sure I get it right. Matthew eleven, twenty eight. Jesus again saying, the same guy who said Get rid of those planks, hypocrite. He said, come to me. So come to me with your plank. All you are weary and burdened by life, by sin, by guilt, by remorse, by shame, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He's not coming to, to rip these planks out of your eye socket and take your eye out with it. It says he's gentle and he's humble in his heart. The Lord of lords and the King of kings is gentle and humble. And he wants to take this out of our heart, out of our eye, so that we can see clearly. And what happens when we get to see clearly? I can help somebody else. If I try to help somebody else while I still got this plank in my eye, I'm going to be doing more damage than I am good. I'm not going to be much help to you. But here's a gift from God. When he allows us to get this plank out of our eye, then we can see clearly to help each other, to help our brothers and sisters in Christ to remove the speck, that little flake out of your eye. And that's a gift. That's a gift. Do you ever wonder what you're here for? If you're alive today, and it looks like we all still are, you're alive today. God put you here for a reason. And there's many reasons of why you're still here. But here's, here's one I know for sure because he told us this. This isn't a good idea. This is a command, right? It's to take the plank out of my eye so that I can see clearly to be able to help you. That's, that's my purpose and your purpose. So God calling you today to get that plank out of your eye so that you can see clearly on how to help your brothers and sisters. There was a, a time when I couldn't, uh, I didn't know it, but I couldn't see good. Uh, I was in high school, maybe in the ninth grade, and uh, I had to start, when the teacher would write on the board, I couldn't see what she was writing, so I'd have to move up to the classroom, to the front of the class so I could see. And 
I, sometimes I'm just kind of dull-witted and didn't realize that my vision was getting bad. I thought everybody couldn't see. And then one day I looked around, and everybody's still in their seat, and I'm at the front of the board like this trying to see what's going on. I said, man, I think I can't see. So I talked to mom and daddy. They took me to the eye doctor. And any of you who, who, whose vision diminished and got glasses for the first time, do you remember what it looked like when you walked outside? You could see all these things that you've been missing. Like the moon's got craters in it. Did y'all know that? There's all kind of craters in there. I always saw this big old white beam like a flashlight up there, but there's detail and there's color and the leaves pop and they got crispness to the color. And that's what happens when, when God takes this, when we surrender our plank to him and he takes it out of our eye, we can see clearly. We can see what he's trying to do, what he's got, what he's going on, what's, up, what's he up to. I preached on this. The, well, let me come back to the Psalm 139 before I leave out of there. It's that Psalm of David and where he says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Search me. Let this be our prayer today to search me. This, this whole chapter is beautiful. I read it a lot, but it's the one where he says, You've searched me and know me, Lord. You know when I rise. You know when I sit. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. This beautiful, beautiful uh, chapter. But then he gets off track in here. And uh, I mean, everything, like verse 17, how precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I'm awake, I'm still with you. Beautiful language. But then he turns. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Uh, like, hang on now. Uh, we're praying all these wonderful things about God, and we're talking about God killed these folks. Man, I'm tired of them. Away from me, you are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Then he's like, whoa, 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 hold up. Search me, God. <laughs> Search me, God, and know my heart. You ever been praying for somebody that went off script like that? I have. I've been praying for somebody, praying for something, then something comes to mind about something happened to me or somebody I don't like, somebody did something wrong to me, and then I start thinking about what I'd like to say to them or do to them. But here's what we can always do is come back and listen. So we need to pray this every day. Search me, God, and know my heart. Know that it's weak, it's angry, it can be evil. I need your help. I need you to perform an operation on me and put your heart in me. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. He is everlasting. Asking him to lead me to him. Lead me in your ways. Your ways are the ones that can turn the cheek when somebody hits me in the other cheek. Your way is the way that helps me to bless those who are my enemies and not curse them. Your way is the way that helps me to get this plank out of my eye. And what a gift to give is, you know, uh, one of the best groups of people I've ever seen good at, at getting planks out of their eyes and then to help others is the, is the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. Folks, Alcoholics, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, they come in with an addiction. They surrender that addiction. They work some steps, which all point to Jesus. They allow him to be the Lord of their life and to remove whatever is in, in them that's offensive to him and that's causing them to stay in addiction. And then they got a, mi a mission after that is to tell everybody else their story. Is to tell everybody else how they got out of this and how, how they're getting better. You ever had a gnat in your eye before? Real irritating. That's, I've got a long stretch. I've probably got a good 20-year history recurring without getting a gnat in my eye. But I, I went on a stretch where I had a gnat in my eye routinely. It seemed like every summer when the gnats were out, they fly in my eye. It's real irritating. It's real annoying. I used to help build pallets. I used to get sawdust in my eye, real irritating, real annoying. But it, when you get that gnat out of your eye, how good does it feel to be able to blink and not have that irritation in there anymore? So imagine how good it'll feel to you and to me when we get this out of our eye. When we get this joker out of there, it'll, listen, if a gnat or a piece of dust getting out of my eye feels good and I feel the relief, think how much relief I'll be able to feel when I get this plank out of here. And then I'll be able to do what he's told me to do. What a gift it'll be that once I can see clearly, instead of judging you and telling what you, you need to do this and you need to do that, by the time I get my plank out, watch what the Lord will do. Watch the people he'll put in your path. It'll be people with the same type of plank as you. 
and then you'll be able to say, hey, I, I've, I've had this plank too. Let me show you how to, how to get out of this plank. And it'll, listen, that's purpose and that's value and that's success in the kingdom. Let me share a couple other scriptures with you. I'm going to ask the ministry team to come on up to I, I'm kind of scared of asking God to show me my planks. I know it's nice to read this verse about searching me and knowing me, but I'm kind of scared. Uh, I'm kind of scared of what I'll find and what he'll see. But he, here's the reality of it. He already knows my stuff, and he knows yours too, and he loves you anyways, and he loves me anyways. Do you remember when Jesus went to the cross for us? It was after we all fasted for 40 days and repented of our sins, and then he came, okay, I'm going to come die for y'all now. Is that how he did it? Jesus came, he, he said, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, the ungodly. In the midst of our sin, in the midst of walking with, listen, I got at least one plank, probably 20 planks, just darting out of my head, darting out of my eyes. In the midst of all that, he died for me and he died for you. He already knows about this stuff, so why don't we just bring it to him and see what he'll do? We've already tried living with those planks, right? Do you like living with them? I don't. I don't. Sometimes I'll get numb, numb to them like I did with my vision and forget it's there. But, man, how nice it is to be able to see clearly. In Romans chapter 2, it says this. You, therefore, have no excuse. You pass judgment on someone else. For whatever point you judge another, you are condemning yourself because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now, we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere human, a mere human being, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, forbearance, and patience? So here it is. Not realizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to repentance. Hey, let He's not waiting on me to come to him like, all right, I'm glad you came now, but he's playing. I'm going I'm to beat your tail now. I'm going to whoop you up. I'm going to punish you. That's not what he's going to do. What he's going to do is he's going to enter. He's going to pass on kindness to us. He's going to pass on his gentleness. He's going to pass on his humbleness. He's going to pass on his love. And that's going to lead us and keep us in repentance with him. And I want to read and close one final passage. Uh, Caleb preached on this chapter last week. And I just, in addition to not judging and to getting the plank out of our own eye and, and helping others with, with, after we get the plank out of our own eye, I, I want to know this is a major purpose for you and me in our walk with the Lord is that he's calling us to do this. This isn't a good idea that, man, if you rank high enough in the Christian world, you can start working on getting planks out and helping others. This is to all of us is to take the plank out of our own eye so that we can see clearly to help our brothers in need. And this is purpose. In, in 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21, it says, So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us, gave you the ministry of reconciliation. God gave you, every person in this room, the ministry of reconciliation. Y'all all been ordained pastors right now. Everybody in here has got the, you're a minister of reconciliation. What better way to reconcile with people is to say, hey, look, I had this plank in my eye. Let me tell you how the Lord got it out of me. And let me tell you how he can help you too. That's ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to, to himself in Christ not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. This is one reason that to me that we got to get these planks out so we can be Christ's ambassadors and he can make his appeal through us. Look what he did through David. He had this going on, that going on, and the Lord healed him of that. He got that plank out of his eye, and now he can see clearly. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I want to say one more thing. And, and just as God reminded me of this, 
there was a time I was struggling with a sin, and uh, he would convict me of it like he does. Holy Spirit would convict you. You know you're doing wrong. He'll convict you. And I would say, I'm sorry, God. Forgive me for doing that. But I really didn't want to change. I didn't want to, I didn't want to stop the sin. And so one day he convicted me of that. And I keep saying, God, forgive me. God, help me. And he knew, because he can search our hearts, that my heart wasn't really in it. So, so he helped me just to get honest with him. And so here, here was my honest prayer to him was that, that God, I, I really don't want to quit this sin, but I believe you want me to, and if you want me to, you're going to have to help me. And he did. <laughs> he did. He helped me. He helped me. I think he appreciates when we get honest with him and real with him and stop pretending and trying to cover up the planks. I mean, I could put a blanket over this plank, but it's still jutting out there, right? It's still a problem. And I can pretend it's not there, but it is. But if we get honest with God, and we'll just close out with prayer, just saying that now, Lord, we just want to get honest with you. Lord, you already know us, and you love us in spite of what you know about us. And we thank you for that. We praise you for that. That's why you're a good God and a mighty God and an awesome God that can forgive to the furthest degree, Lord, as far as the east is from the west, Lord, you've removed our sins, Lord. So thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to join you in a sacred mission and a holy purpose is to remove these planks, Lord. Take, come, come into us, Lord. Search us and know us, Lord. Show us any way that's offensive in us and lead us in the way everlasting. Lead us to your heart, Lord. We love you, Lord. I pray for every, every person here, Lord, that doesn't know you, Lord. I pray that, that every person here today leave here knowing you in a right relationship with you. Be with our ministry team as they minister, Lord. Prophesy to them, through them, speak words of life and healing and, and exactly what, help everybody here to, to hear the gospel in their own language. We love you and we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Anybody that wants prayer or needs help with anything, you can come up and see anybody on the ministry team.